After the Vertex M100 and then the M100A, is there any real point in this new Vertex M36? Or is it just more of the same? Is this watch good value for money if you're after a new field watch? Let's find out. I'm Anthony, and today we're going to have a look at the new Vertex M36 and discuss if this watch is worth it, especially if, like me, you like military-inspired watches. In 2024, we celebrated the 80th anniversary of D-Day. That, of course, is a military operation that still lives on strongly in the popular consciousness even now. The soldiers all those years ago who landed on those French beaches would have been wearing military-issued watches supplied by 12, mainly Swiss brands, who answered the UK government's commission. These super collectible watches are now known as the Dirty Dozen. One of those Dirty Dozen brands was Vertex, and they supplied, back in the day, around 15,000 or so of the total 150,000 watches that were made for the war effort. And this is what the M36 was really born to remember. The original Dirty Dozen design brief took in watches that were between 35 and 38 millimeters in diameter. So the 36 millimeters of the M36, hence the name, sits more or less bang in the middle of that spectrum. And that perfectly encapsulates the spirit of World War II and that military watch aesthetic. So M36, following the logic, you might think that the M100, Vertex's first watch, was as wide as a plate, but luckily it's, it's only 40 millimeters. However, that is still considerably larger than the original watches that were in the Second World War. And that's really, for me, the principal difference between this and the M100. The M100 was that original field watch, and that came before the M100A, which was basically exactly the same, only with a fully automatic movement rather than the a hand-wound mechanism as you found in the M100. Hand-winding, it's of course sort of more authentic because that's what happened back in the day. And many people would say that it's a sort of more visceral feeling, you know, that tactile feeling of winding your own watch and powering it up. Yet it is undeniably less convenient than having a watch that quite literally charges itself just through the act of wearing it on your wrist. For that reason, the M36 has a fully automatic Salita movement no hand winding here. And that's maybe one aspect that isn't quite as true to the original as it could be. But really, I think we're arguing over fine details here because the rest of the watch looks absolutely authentic to the point that if somebody had told you that it was recently recovered off a beach in Normandy and then painstakingly restored, you'd probably believe them. There's no reason not to. The sapphire crystal that you see on this watch, it's box shaped as opposed to domed, and that gives it an additional layer of vintage charm. And then, of course, you've got that characteristic dial layout with those large Arabic numerals and the, the railroad minutes track. And that's right in keeping with the World War II era of field watch. What is much less authentic, though, is the price. Now, at over 2000, in fact, by some margin, this price tag has got some people talking, particularly on the forums, as I was looking at recently. Original military spec watches were, of course, built to a specific budget. We've not been able to find a record of what that budget was, but you can bet that it was pretty tight and certainly not the equivalent of two grand plus per watch, which is what we have here. However, looking on the bright side, what this means is that we have a replica that is not only true to form when it comes to paying homage to the originals, but actually exceeds them in pretty much every way. And that's really impressive because whatever you do in life, we all know how hard it is to improve from the original. This is actually probably a good time before we go too much into more detail to look back at what started it all. And that was the original family of Dirty Dozen Watches. I've got something else here, which is something very similar. It's an Amiga version and I'm very lucky because this happens to be mine. Actually, this watch here is really one of the first watches that got me into collecting. The Amiga is, um, is a lot less rare than the uh, Vertex Dirty Dozen equivalent with about 25,000 examples of these ones being produced. So more or less 10,000 more than the equivalent Vertex. This, this M36 is more or less a, a like for like replica, give or take the modern refinements that tie it more to the present day. As a reminder, here's what the British government was originally looking for, what it put in its original design brief for the Dirty Dozen watches. It wanted a black dial with luminescent indices and 
Arabic numerals, seconds of course at six o'clock. Luminescent hour and minute hands, important, is dark on battlefields. It wanted a steel case, which is shock resistant, not polished, and water resistant. And of course, also um, an easily operated crown. And finally, of course, unbreakable and shockproof perspex glass. That's one way you spot Dirty Dozen watches. They're also easily recognized thanks to a series of engravings and symbols. Probably the best known is the broad arrow, which denotes British military equipment, and also the letters WWW, which stands for Watch Wrist Waterproof. Now, here's the thing. Every Dirty Dozen watch in existence today, and by the way, there's reckoned to be only like 20 full sets in the world, has um, developed a, a patina and for me, it's what makes this particular watch so alluring. If only it could talk, who knows what it would say. And this one would probably say, I'm radioactive, keep back, given the amount of loom that seems to have sort of like fallen off and is accumulating in the bottom of the case. But never mind, this watch is one that means a great deal to me. And, and, and definitely part of the charm is that patina. If you look at it, for example, at some point it's had service hands and that's completely normal because these dirty dozen watches, they're all really Frankensteins. They were regularly bashed around, sent away and fixed by army engineers using whichever parts were available rather than bespoke parts and equipment. So it goes without saying, I think, that the M36 is, is a watch that personally I love. I think it would actually be very hard to, to own an original Dirty Dozen watch like this one and not love the modern recreation. What's there not to like? However, it is different. And what you have to acknowledge, I believe, is that this watch here, the M36, is finished at a much higher level than specified in period. Whether or not that makes it an improvement or simply a more inauthentic version of the original is a matter for debate. And likewise, the price is a matter for debate too. The problem is this one. You can actually buy an original Dirty Dozen watch, if you look around, for less than the price of a new M36. What would you do? It's a tricky one, but me personally, I might be tempted to stick with the original. But of course, don't forget that when it comes to the target market for this watch, well, there's probably going to be a few people who have both. The original Dirty Dozen to own as um, a museum piece, although, as you can see from my watch, it gets worn on a a regular basis and it's certainly not pampered at all. And alongside that, of course, they might want to own as well a new Vertex M36 as a watch to wear every day and a reminder of its illustrious ancestor. The loom, for example, on, on the modern watches is absolutely great, which is more than you can say for the somewhat tired example on the original. The M36 from Vertex, it comes with a couple of straps and a metal bracelet in the box. They're pretty good. But if you fancy something different, visit the, the Watch Gecko website because we have a ton of high quality straps which look very, very good on this style of watch. So what do we make of all of that? In the end, Vertex, I admire them because they've clearly set out their stall from the outset as being the key and perhaps the most loyal supporters of the retro military field watch genre. And this is like a really, really fine example. Vertex was actively involved in the D-Day celebrations recently, and that ties the whole story of this watch even more closely in with its heritage. But of course, you know, from a company point of view, as time goes on, it's inevitably going to become harder to keep on reproducing convincing variations on the same theme that people want to carry on collecting. For now though, I think this might be the most convincing Dirty Dozen tribute watch yet. It's undoubtedly built to a higher standard than the original. But does that make it necessarily better? And will it prove to be a good investment over time? I don't know. Over to you.